Hey guys, Duke here. I apologize for the lack of videos as of late. I've been dealing with increasing health problems, which has been causing some, uh, a bit of irritation uh, when I speak. Uh, I've been, if, so if I clear my throat at any time during this video, I do apologize again, but that's just the way that these things are. And I will do my best to make the video. And what I have for you today is a very, I wouldn't say rare, uh, I wouldn't even say unheard of, but definitely kind of uncommon on the surplus market and they are getting increasingly harder to find as they are no longer produced as far as I know. And that obviously, as the title would indicate, be the Avon Improved Powered Air Purifying Respirator or ST Papper or I Papper, whichever you prefer to call it as. There's a slight difference between the two nomenclatures. But before we get into that, the design was fielded sometime in the early 2000s. I haven't been able to pinpoint an exact origin on its development. I do know that it was a program initiated by the Joint Executive Office for Chemical Biological Defense to provide U.S. SOCOM with a solution that allows them to use a powered air purifying respirator hybrid with an SCBA unit. Um, if you look over to the left here, I have the standard um, Airboss C420. Uh, these were made by a multitude of companies, including Draeger, Micronel, Safety Tech, etc. Uh, this one in particular is an Airboss C420 with the remote cable assembly that US SOCOM and SOF absolutely loved the hell out of, given that the advantage was that it took the power away from the um, control of the unit itself and put it on the end of the hose, which is an advantage, but... You know, the C420 is a very good and is a very well-functioning design, and in fact, US SOCOM is still utilizing them today in their NBC operations. However, it is a very dated design, and they were looking for a bit more punch out of the configuration, as it is a very clunky and unruly design. When mounted, it tends to like to flop around due to its peculiar shape, and overall, as lightweight as it is, some improvements needed to be made. However, the improvements that US SOCOM had received with the IPAPR unit were not for the better. The earliest references to the iPapper that I've seen were probably sometime around 2005 or so. They're probably, the unit was probably in development well earlier, but I did not, I haven't seen any reports that have predated 2005, so I'm going to put that as a benchmark for the earliest that I have seen it. And it is pretty much just an upscaled C420 in a more rectangular boxy shape with the inclusion of a um, quick disconnect attachment so that the unit can be run with an SCBA bottle of some sort, be it the standard um, uh, ST53 style bottle or the ST53 SD bottle, which is a 10 minute escape bottle, which would have had its own separate pouch on the side. A very interesting setup, which I hope to recreate soon. I know Retro Respirators has a very early MSA, actually no, pre-MSA, I believe, paraclete pouch for the ST or, or the IPAPR unit that holds a separate um, uh, ST53 SD bottle right next to it, and I'm very th um, very excited to get that eventually, but for the time being, I have this one to show. And as you can see from the cover, um, it would allow for the, uh, the unit itself to be strapped onto an SCBA bottle. It has the standard um, battery caps, which the green cap obviously would allow the unit to be used with a rechargeable Safety Tech um, lithium... Uh, lithium ion type battery. I uh, could probably get that wrong. And then the, obviously the shorter black cap, uh, which is wanting to hide from me here, is for the non-rechargeable BA5800U uh, lithium sulfur dioxide battery, which was more common in military stock, and these were probably more often utilized. Um, the iPapper came in a variety of speeds. Like the C420, you could either get it as a single speed unit, like my example here, or there was a three speed unit, which I know Moulage currently owns himself. Um, the, not much else to say about the, uh, the mechanics of the unit. I will say, however, that the units seem to be relatively short lived or there just isn't a lot of reports on them. And in fact, the latest, um, series of photos that I've seen these things in use was in Korea in 2011 during joint, um, uh, CBRN operations with South Korean forces. But uh, essentially this, while the unit expanded the, scope of capabilities of the C420, it most certainly did not reduce any weight at all. The C420, um, on its own without any canisters, uh, hoses, covers, etc., weighs about one and a half pounds. The iPapper, without any covers, hoses, filters, etc., weighs a whopping nearly three pounds. It's something like 2.95 pounds. So, very, very chunky unit, but you get, that's the trade-off you get with the advantages of being able to integrate with SCBA. Um, on the, notice on the top of the unit um, is where the control switch would be. 
obviously you can see that um, hopefully you can see that there we go it's in the light now you can see that the two and the three position have been scratched off with black marker and you cannot rotate the switch past those that actually currently on the first position um, and I cannot rotate it further past that because it is not a three speed unit the hose is not fireproof some people have asked me if these hose covers are fireproof they are not these are just a uh, um, a water resistant um, ripstop Nyko material with velcro patches and as you can see the unit has a uh, a remote cable switch, which incidentally is actually the same length as the C420 remote switch. These are not. This is not a short adapter. It is literally just a standard 32, 34 inch remote cable, which has been coiled around the hose continuously and secured in place with zip ties. And there's a lot of photos of this unit itself without any hose covers being in use at all. What they'll simply do is they'll either just zip tie the remote cable on in various positions, or they'll have a bunch of Velcro straps around certain points of the hose, which is very interesting to see, and I kind of like the look of that setup, but what have you, I managed to get one with a hose cover, so thankful for that. Um, the way the cover works is certainly interesting, where you have two straps across the top, those simply s slip off, and then the, it's a little bit finicky to undo, if I can show it on camera properly, hopefully I'm not going out of focus at all here, but it just slips off the bottom, and the unit entirely pulls out, although I believe my battery cap is caught there. Uh, and it got caught on the canister again. And then that frees out the unit itself from the the uh, the sheath. And as you can see, the sheath has a set of Molly adapters, Molly uh, Pals webbing straps on the back here to secure it to a flat piece of kit, like a flight carrier or so on, if you were using this without a um, an SCBA bottle, although I do not, this particular pouch doesn't fare that well without an SCBA bottle, so I wouldn't recommend it. Um, it has a couple D-rings in various places to use with... Um, quick release buckle straps, which are not present with this example, to further secure it to the um, corresponding quick release buckles on the SCBA bottle. Um, giving a look at the markings on this blower unit, you can see on the side here, um, if you can zoom in on that, give me one moment folks while I hold it so I can tap the camera to focus. Give me one moment. Oh, come on now. There we go. So as you can see, it says Avon, you got a part number, iPapper, single speed, and then a very, very low serial number. One thing you might notice about the iPapper is that its filter ports stick out a considerable bit, considerable bit from the C420s, which the filters on the C420 obviously lie flush. I have it with American C2A1 canisters, um, and as you can see, it lies completely flush. And the, the reason for these um, sort of jutting out canister ports is so that you can use it with the Avon GPC F50 conformal canisters. But I have also seen photos in addition to the GPC F50 canisters, people using C2 or C2A1 canisters screwed onto these as well. So this, it is not uh, incapable of using C2A1s, but it does look a bit goofy. When you look at it from the side, you can see how far these canisters stick out by comparison. Um, not really much to say about that. Another interesting aspect is that the entire, uh, excuse me for bumping the camera, a, lot, a very awkward position working down here, is that the, um, the back casing is completely held on with six metallic clips, whereas the C420 itself is held on with six screws. I'm not sure why they did it like this, I guess it's for more easy maintenance, but I will tell you, I have seen the interior of an iPapper before, not mine, but Moulage's, and it is a complete mess of different components. It is the most confusing array of components I've ever seen on a blower unit individually. Um, for one thing, it has the same 40 millimeter regulator as the ST53. It uses the same 40 millimeter regulator that would screw on to an M53 style face piece where the filter would go. Um, and it is completely attached to a, a Y splitter inside the unit. And inside here, you can sort of hopefully see in there, just barely, probably not, but on this side, there is a Y splitter. On this side of the Y splitter, the ST53 regulator would be over here, and then there would be a line connecting it to the quick disconnect on the bottom here. And then essentially what would happen is that this other end of the Y splitter is connected to a standard C420 style motor blower, which is housed kind of loosely inside here. It's not connected to either of the ports. It's just relying on ambient suction to draw air through the filters and out through the hose. Um, but what happens when you pressurize this, as soon as pressure hits 
that line, what will happen is that there's a pneumatic piston. There's like a separate line that comes off and actuates a pneumatic piston, which closes a flap. Uh, it moves it moves a flap over to the side of the the uh, powered air purifying respirator joint of the Y splitter and completely cuts off the blower from being able to force air out the hose. So it's very interesting, and I'm not sure if there's any electrical component to this that shuts off the blower as well. You might have to remember to uh, switch it off by hand with the remote switch, but other than that, it's kind of interesting how there's a mechanical component that completely um, isolates the PAPR from being able to blow into the hose. I'm, I'm not sure it makes a perfect seal on that, but it's just definitely an interesting quirk that they added to the design. And I'll try and show a photo of what that looks like at the end of the video if you stay tuned for that. But just believe me when I say that it is a cluster. There is, it's just complete, complete and utter chaos inside this unit. Um, another interesting thing is the, another thing I never figured out is this little, um, I like to call it a canula. I'm not sure what this thing actually is. Um, but from what I understand, there's this long length of silicone tubing that goes inside the hose, like a big tapeworm. And on the other end, there's like a little plastic bit with a, with a little a couple of little holes that allow the air to come out. Um, and what I believe this is for is just the air line for the SCBA function of it. When you inhale the positive, the, the pressure would be, would be forced through that hose. And obviously the hose ends somewhere around here. So um, very interesting how they would approach that. You would think it would just be a straight pass through. But I guess they're wanting to conserve air, and it's un it's under pressure, and they can't get that high pressure of fittings inside here, so they're trying to restrict as much air as possible for the SCBA. Not sure why they did it like that, but again, very interesting to note. Now I'll try to get the remote switch back on for you guys. There we go. And there's not a whole lot else to say about this. It's a very interesting unit. Uh, I'm, again, I'm not entirely sure how much of these are currently in use with US SOCOM. I have not tested it with an SCBA to confirm or deny um, the ability is that it shuts off the motor if you if you switch it to SCBA mode. But it is a very uncommon and very hard to find blower. I do not believe Avon is currently producing these. They are currently putting their flagship line of hybrid um, PAPRs as the MP Papper and CS Papper, which is the multi-position powered air purifying respirator and the combination system powered air purifying respirator, which are both basically the same thing. Very a, a light, flexible rubber spine that you have two filters screwed onto, and then the third port, you would have the, an Avon Easy Air PAPR that would provide um, suction from the canister and into the mask itself, and then there is accommodations for the CS Papper to integrate with an SCBA bottle, similar to the iPapper, but on a much, much lighter weight scale. So that being said, um, I will switch the view, do a jump cut here, and I will put everything back together, and I will show the blowers in action. So see you then. Okay, I am back and I have both units complete with canisters and batteries inside of them. I have in the C420 the BA5800U non-rechargeable lithium sulfur dioxide battery and in the iPapper I have the rechargeable safety tech um, lithium ion rech uh, rechargeable battery. I already said rechargeable. So that aside, let's get down to it. I believe I do not have the C420 switched on yet, so I will switch it on to the fullest power three, which is equivalent to a single speed unit from what I understand. Since both units use the same motor blower, um, they are equivalent to a nominal voltage of 5.2 volts, which is roughly six volts, uh, and a consumption rate of 1.6 amps from what I have studied. Um, so they're both pretty much equal in terms of their power usage. So keep that into consideration. Um, although very kind of archaic uh, units, given they use a lot of the same hardware, they're just, they're not as good as they could be, but they're very classy, very, um, very well-known blower units, so at least, at least the C420 is, obviously, but I'm rambling ahead of myself, so let's get a, go on ahead with the test here, um, so obviously, with the remote switch, it's, it's a matter of, oh, almost forgot to remove the cap plug here, and that's literally what they called, uh, cap plug 7, oh, size 17, uh, which you probably can't see, and I'm not going to bother to focus, because it isn't important, Powering the unit on. It powers on. It's a C420. You do exactly... It does exactly what you'd expect it to do, so... Nothing special to see there. However, the real interest is the iPapper. Obviously, this is what we're make, doing the review about. And having the unit switched to the first position. And power the unit on. Um, just from a auditorial standpoint, I noticed that the iPapper is a little bit louder, and from personal experience, the air coming out of it 
has a very sweet smell to it. It's like a very artificial, like, air freshener strawberry smell. It's very weird. I'm not really sure how to put it, but it's, it's a very, very um, peculiar and subtle smell to it. Uh, I don't know if you've ever smelled the air coming out of your PAPR, but the, at least in mine, my situation, the iPapper has a very noticeable strawberry scent coming out of it. It's very, I don't want to say unsettling, but it's just not what you would expect. Other minor unimportant details to make note of that I've just kind of noticed myself um, is with the hoses. Obviously, the C420 I have here has a 34-inch uh, hose, and the uh, this is uh, per particularly my favorite type of the um, the angled male connector, but they're a bit stiff. That's the only problem with these, is that they're a bit stiff to rotate and they're a bit irritating to thread on. Um, meanwhile, on the other hand, the Avon adapter has the opposite problem. I am not a fan of this this crucifix-shaped um, radial here that allows you to rotate, but it's a lot easier to rotate. I have no problems threading this on while I'm wearing the mask, and so that's a benefit. Uh, although, I do a, I, ah, although I do know Avon is currently using a... Uh, a, a thread radial, which is much similar to this style, but uh, has a bit more um, has a bit more traction on it, I guess you could say. But I, I don't really know how to describe it all that well. But uh, if it performs as the same as this does, more power to them because I actually love their current um, hose thread uh, appearance. But that's not really all that important. And before anyone has it on their mind, not that they can ask anyways, due to the comments currently being disabled, um, that's just out of my preference, uh, just to simplify things around here, I may turn, the, turn that off at a future date. Um, what you're seeing on the canisters of the C420 are decon covers. These are essentially rubberized plastic covers, um, which um, allow you to decontaminate the C420 while it is in operation without it sucking the particulates or droplets of decon solution into the canisters and fouling them up. So that's a bit of an interesting thing. We I managed to find a couple of these for pretty cheap on eBay. You don't often see these floating around. You usually have to get these directly from a retailer, and they cost upwards of $40 per cover. These were... These were like $19 per cover when I got them, so definitely a good steal on that. Wish I could say the same for the blower. This thing was a hefty, oh, what was it? it was, this was on sale, and it was still like around the ballpark of $1,500. So definitely, I would say this is not what you want to look for when you want to consider a blower unit, unless you're obviously some sort of SOF or, you know, hardcore operator or just some dude who wants to hump around with hybrid SCBA units. Um, most people nowadays are going for... Uh, the Wilcox Patriot. I know there's a few of them currently on eBay. Those are a much better setup from what I hear from most people. I don't know. I just like the charm of the iPapper. It's a very peculiar stopgap solution while SOF was testing out a lot of different things. And I'm glad I have one here to show you guys. And hopefully sometime in the future I can compare the three speed and the single speed unit that I have. But that'll be much, much later in the future. But that being said, that's really all I have to say. Um... My next review will probably be in regards to C420 pouches. I know that there's a lot of different C420 pouches out there, and I would like to do a review comparing the different designs and kind of giving my own opinions and experiences on which one I think is the best and which one kind of sucks, but we'll get into that later. I'm going to be pumping out reviews slowly. You can probably already tell from this review that I've been kind of constantly out of breath and I've been salivating a lot. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm hoping to figure that out when this pandemic blows over. So until then, um, hope you enjoyed. I can't really comment or give me your opinions now, but hopefully in the future, uh, I'll clear that up once I have a better idea what I want to do with this channel. So that being said, I'm Duke and I will see you all later.